Hi, everyone. My name is David Lin. Thanks for coming to my capstone presentation. The title of my project is Return to Equilibrium, Monitoring the Recovery of a Salt Marsh in Kingston, Washington. So some background first. Salt marshes are ecosystems that protect coasts from extreme weather events such as floods and hurricanes and preserve water quality by filtering pollutants. Many salt marshes have been converted into riparian woodlands due to land use such as agriculture and infrastructure. Considerable effort to restore salt marshes have been taken in recent years. If you look at figure one, we have the West Kingston Bridge in 20, after the 2018 construction. Before 2018, the bridge had this narrow tunnel underneath called the culvert that constricted much of the water flow into the salt marsh and estuary. However, the transition of riparian woodlands into salt marshes is not well documented. Thus, there's a need to identify appropriate monitoring methods. So this led me to my research question, what are effective methods of monitoring the restoration of salt marshes? This summer, I interned at Stillwaters Environmental Center, an agency that is focused on monitoring the restoration of the Carpenter Creek Estuary and Salt Marsh. The removal of the two culverts, the first one in 2012 and 20, the second one in 2018, has returned tidal flow into the salt marsh, raising the salinity of the soil. So my project was focused on examining the relationship between the increased soil salinity and the declining health of red alder trees. And to do this, I did three things. I collected quantitative data on the growth and health of alder trees along the salt marsh edge. I measured the soil salinity with a hanometer measuring electrical conductivity, which was converted into PSU. And finally, I conducted a literature review to better understand the methods used by researchers to record tree health. We look in the second figure, it's me holding a hanometer into a soil sample. The reason we use distilled water is because it's uh, very good at conductivity, and you can't stick the meter, the hanometer into dry soil, otherwise it wouldn't pick up the current. So from this, we I found that um, comparing crown loss with salinity, uh, first, if you look at the figure three, we have um, three stages of crown loss. The first is like the healthiest, um, and the on the right we have like probably dead slash having no leaves. And so I classified each of my trees as a sample on a scale of one to four based on how much crown coverage they had left. Um, the trees with the least crown coverage tended to be closer to the edge of the salt marsh, which had the saltiest soil. Uh, a significant downfall of this approach is that it only captures a moment in time rather than changes over years. As we know, correlation is not causation, so there could be other factors at play. And so for my second set of results, comparing alder tree rings with salinity, um, the alder trees showed a decline in growth year after year with high, higher salinity soils. The reason I know this is because when you take a sample of the tree rings, um, it allows us to measure the distance between each ring. And so it's easier to track when certain events may have influenced its growth. So if you look at figure four, um, each year um, I track the mean ring width of the alder trees as a percentage of its growth. And I marked from 2012 and 2018 the two culvert removals. As you can see, there's a trending decline in the total growth as the years go by. And if you notice, before 2012, there's actually still there's a trending decline even before the culvert removals. And what I believe may be causing this um, is when I was sampling the trees, um, I was restricted because a lot of the trees near the salt marsh um, in the edge were already dying and were fallen. And the problem with dead trees is that the, the samples physically crumble, and so you can't really measure. And if you don't know what year they died, it can be hard to cross-reference the years. And so the broader significance of this results is by extending, expanding tree core monitoring to the entire perimeter of a salt marsh, it could be an effective procedure for tracking the long-term transition of riparian woodlands into salt marshes. Monitoring salt marsh restoration projects can serve as a proxy for how similar ecosystems may cope with sea level rise in the future. In Puget Sound, there's predicted three to eight inches of, of sea level rise by 2100. And so other riparian woodlands that aren't uh, salt marshes, we can better understand or predict how the vegetation is going to adapt over time. 
And finally, I'd like to give my acknowledgments first and foremost to Melissa Fleming, my site supervisor. Without any of this, none of this, without her, none of this would be possible. My faculty advisor, Jason Toft, and uh, Thomas Brown, another intern who helped me gather my results and do lab work. And finally, my friends and family who supported me through this whole process. Thanks for listening.